What's going on everybody? I'm Brandon from Walker's Woodworks. Welcome back to the channel. I've been getting a lot of questions lately on how I put together these big desktops and tabletops. And today I'm gonna to show you how I do it. The client for this build wanted maple, so I went and picked up some nice eight quarter stock. This will be used as a desktop, but the same process can be used for a table as well. The width of this desktop will be 32 inches, so each board will be ripped at just under 6.5 inches to make it look symmetrical. I buy most of my lumber surfaced on three sides, or what they call S3S. With S3S lumber, you really only have to trim one edge to get your final size, since the other three are already surfaced. Buying it in this form will really save you a lot of time, especially if you don't have a planer and a joiner to take it down from rough lumber to this state. Once it's all ripped to final width, I lay out the boards and make sure the grain pattern on the ends is rotated on each board. This helps combat twisting or warping later on. After I have all the boards laid out how I want them, I label them so I know how they go back together. Yes, I already had them labeled. I hate when you push record on the camera and it decides not to. I put all my tops together using biscuits. They help keep the boards aligned during glue up. You can also use dowels or dominoes if you want to get real fancy. Here I'm just marking where I'm going to put them. I usually start in about 4 inches from the end, and then about every 10 to 12 inches after that. I use a T-square to mark a line all the way across for a reference when it's time to cut the slots. I always use number 20 biscuits, and just try to get them in the center of your material. They make expensive biscuit joiners, but this Ryobi has worked great for me for years. You want to cut slots on the inside of the outer two boards, and then on both sides of all the inner boards. Once I had all the slots cut, I laid the boards back out in order on the clamps and got them all lined up. Starting at one edge, I stood each board up to expose the edge and biscuit slot where my glue will go. Leave the last one laying down though, it doesn't need glue. I've been experimenting with this roller attachment on a glue bottle from Rockler. It seems to work really well and spreads the glue out evenly. I'll leave a link to it and all the other tools I use in the description below for you guys to check out. I like to use quite a bit of glue on my joints, and I only put glue on one side. I prefer Type Bond 3 because it's extremely strong and has a long working time. I put a little extra glue in all the slots where the biscuits go, and then go back over everything with a brush to make sure everything is covered. Here's where it can get messy. Lay each board down and fit them together, and then lightly tighten the clamps until the piece is drawn together. But don't tighten them yet, just snug them up a little bit. Then you're going to want to use clamps on the top between the bottom ones to distribute the pressure evenly. Once you have them on, tighten everything down a little bit at a time, alternating from the top to the bottom, making sure it stays flat as you go. I'll usually allow the glue to cure for about 10 minutes and then go back and scrape off any excess I can with an old chisel. This saves a ton of time later scraping glue. The next day I came back after everything was nice and cured and took it out of the clamps. This is kind of a challenge with one person and large tops. The last top I did was a 10 foot long by 44 inch wide top that sent me to the chiropractor. Be careful guys. All right, so there's many different ways, but this is how I flatten my tops. I used to use a belt sander, which works fine, but the Rotex works so much better. I started out with 60 grit to get everything flat on both sides and then moved to 80 grit to really smooth it out. I did the same flattening process on the other side. If it's a really wide top or a long top like this one, I like to use C-channel in the bottom to help keep it from warping or cupping over time. You can purchase this at any metal supply yard, or even a local home store usually has some. For this top, I used three pieces of C-channel. I laid them out where I wanted them, making them even on each side, and then marked each one. You want to make sure the holes in the channel are elongated as well, width-wise, to allow room for wood movement. Talk about good timing on this shot. Here I'm using my router with a quarter inch bit to cut the slots for the channel to lay in following my marks. 
I do this in several shallow passes. I also cut an eighth inch of depth out of the center to allow the channel to be flush with the bottom of the top using a big flattening bit and a chisel to clean up the ends. Then I can install the inserts that will accept flat machine thread allen bolts. I really like these ones by Rampa, they're probably the best ones I've used. I like to use CA glue when I install these just to make sure they don't back out even though I'm pretty sure they never will. I like to run them in a little bit, back them back out, run them back in just to get the threads nice and secured in there and not strip the wood out. After they're all installed I laid in the C channel and test fit all the bolts. One thing I should have mentioned before is I always leave about an extra two inches on all my boards so I can come back later and square them up after the glue up. I use my track saw for this, but you can use a straight edge and a circular saw. It'll work just fine. I made a few passes on this because maple is really hard and doing this makes it easier on the saw and the blade. I removed the channel and went to my favorite sander, the Mercaderos. If you guys are looking for a high-end sander, highly recommend it, as I always say. But I went from 120 all the way up to 220 to finish sand the bottom, and then I took a router and went around the outer edge with a quarter inch roundover bit just to soften all the edges. This is what people call water popping or raising the grain. Because I'll be using a water-based finish on this, it would bring the fibers of the wood up and make it feel kind of rough. So using water beforehand and then re-sanding to 220 keeps this from happening. Basically you just spray a light coat of water, rub it into the wood, let it dry, and then re-sand. Off camera I blew off the top with some air and then wiped it all down clean. As I said I used the water-based polyurethane on the top. It will not yellow like oil-based does over time and keeps the maple looking really natural. I like to apply this with even coats using a foam brush. I also learned to make sure the coats aren't very thick as you put them on. You'll be tempted to do it thick, but just two thin coats and sand in between, about two to three coats, you'll be good to go. Looking back, I should have installed the channel before flipping it over. Oh well, live and learn. I used the same process on the top side, but I applied four coats and I sanded with a Scotch-Brite pad in between them. It makes it a lot smoother. I always brand my work and everyone always asks me where I get my brands from. I get mine from a place called Gearheart Industry. I highly recommend them. Great people over there.
off camera I reinstalled the channel, flipped it over, and this thing was ready for delivery. Well, that pretty much does it. I hope the video helped you guys out. If it did, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment down below with what you think about it, and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. I really appreciate it. Also, check this video out. I'll see you guys on the next one.